Welcome to this week's Midweek Word. Let's open in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we cast the whole of our care, all our anxieties, all our worries, all our concerns on you. For we know you care for us affectionately and you care about us watchfully. So we come with expectancy tonight to receive from you by faith. Thank you for ears to hear, eyes to see, hearts to receive. We believe as a result of hearing your word, our lives will be changed on this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want you to get something to write with because I want you to make some note of these scriptures that we're going to go over so you can go back over them for yourself. We are reminded in Hebrews 4 and 12 that God's word is alive and full of power. So when we meditate upon God's word, he's able to reveal things to us we won't even discuss on this evening. The title of tonight's discussion is, It's Time to Take Back Our Cities. Did you know it's our responsibility what happens in our cities? Psalms 115, 16 reminds us that God has put us in charge of the earth. And it says that the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. We are also reminded of Matthew 18 and 18. And I'll read this out of the Passion Translation. And it says, Receive this truth. Whatever you forbid on earth will be considered to be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you release on earth will be considered to be released in heaven. Simply put, God will allow what we allow. Now, that doesn't mean he will agree with all of our decisions. He put us in charge and he's not taking back that authority until he sends Jesus back for his church. So let's see what God's word has to say concerning this matter. But before we go further, I want to go over just a few foundational scriptures. The first is Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. And I like this out of the uh, the message translation. And it reads, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. So whatever action we take, We must be led by the spirit of God. And just because it sounds good or the majority of the people are doing it doesn't make it pleasing to our God. The next scripture I want us to look at is Romans chapter eight, verses 14 out of the King James. And it reads, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. When we are led by God's spirit in our decisions, that's when we are identified as one of his. No, this doesn't mean that we won't miss it because we will. But when you and I are faced with the decision, how we should respond, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 and Romans 8 and 14 should come immediately to mind. The question we should be asking ourselves is, will my actions honor my heavenly father? Am I being led by God's spirit or is this something I've decided to do no matter what. The next passage I want us to look at is Isaiah 55 verses eight through nine. And we're going to be coming from the King James version. And it reads for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways. My ways saith the Lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now this passage is not saying we can't have God's thoughts or his ways. Because we're reminded of 1 Corinthians 2.16 that says we have the mind of Christ. And we do hold his thoughts and feelings in our hearts. And that's from the Amplified Classic version of 1 Corinthians 2.16. We don't have that displayed on tonight. This passage also serves as a reminder that no matter how many letters we have behind our names, our God always knows what's best. And remember Proverbs 3.5. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. We have help as believers. We have the spirit of God living on the inside of us and God expects for us to use that help. Amen. So briefly, we want to talk about taking back our cities and shortly we will get to God's solution for restoration of our cities. And that includes you and I as part of his plan. Now we can't expect Things to change if we're not committed to change. Our anger is God given, but you know it's not enough. 
God desires that anger or passion that we have to lead us to taking action to be part of fixing the problem. So let's look at God's method for restoration of our cities, governments, communities, and our homes. So I want us to look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 out of the Living Bible. And this is the Apostle Paul talking to his protege, Timothy, and it reads, Hear my directions. Pray much for others. Plead for God's mercy upon them. Give thanks for all he is going to do for them. Pray in this way for kings and all others who are in authority over us or in a place of high responsibility so that we can live in peace and quietness, spending our time in godly living, thinking much about the Lord. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, for he longs for all to be saved and to understand this truth. Now, let's look at the same passage in the King James Version, and it reads, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and those that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. So our weapon for change in our cities, communities and homes is our prayers. We are reminded here in first Timothy to pray for all men, kings and those in position of authority over us. And as a result, that's when the peace comes in. That's when the godliness comes in. That's when the honesty comes in. And he said, this pleases me because it's my will that all be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. Now, did you notice this passage didn't say that we should spend numerous hours daily complaining about those in a position of authority over us or those that we don't agree with, those we don't like. Now, let's look back at the Living Bible translation of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. I want to look at that once again. The Living Bible translation of 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1, 2, 3. Hear what it says. It says, hear my directions. Pray much for others. Plead for God's mercy upon them. What they don't deserve. He said, give me permission in their life. I know they're acting like a clown right now. I know they are making some unwise decisions, but let me get involved. Don't you try to solve the problem. And it goes on to say, give thanks for all he is going to do for them. That means he wants to answer a prayer. He wants to answer your prayer of faith on their behalf. And he said, Pray in this way for kings and all others who are in authority over us or are in a place of high responsibility. Why? So that we can live in peace, quietness, spending our time in godly living, thinking much about the Lord. God wants our focus on what he is saying and doing. It's impossible for us to see what God is doing if we are continually distracted. Yes, I want to encourage you to stay involved. Know what's going on. You can watch your local news. You know, we grew up watching local news for 30 minutes, right? Then we switched over to Dan Rather or whoever it was for 30 minutes for national news. 60 minutes. It was more than, it was more than enough, right? But now we get consumed. We have it on our smartphone. We get alerts to say this person's not doing this. This person's not doing that. But remember, those are distractions. If you're investing all of that time, how much time do you really have to focus in on what God is speaking to you to do right now? Remember John 10:10. 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief comes but for to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, but I have come that you may have life and enjoy it. Have it to the full until it overflows. So the only way we can experience the life that Jesus has promised us that is he has made available is to remain focused and continue to walk in love regardless. So as we prepare to close, I want to encourage you to start praying. Now, let's put that list up that I want you to start praying for. I want you to start praying for your governor. I want you to start praying for your mayor your city council, your police chief, 
and the police force. I want you to pray for your local judges, your teachers, parents, our children, your neighbor. Pastor mentioned on Sunday, our neighbors, everyone we come in contact with, not just the ones to our right and to our left. Gang leaders and gang members. Please do just like Paul said to Timothy, plead for God's mercy upon their lives. See, you can't go out and stop the drug dealer from selling the drugs or wonder why he's doing what he's doing. But how about we intercede on his behalf and say, Father, draw him into a new occupation and take all the guys that are following him and make him his partners. And they all get into godly business and shut down all the other things that are going on. But you and I, by complaining about it, by doing nothing about it, can't make that impact. We have to intercede on their behalf and pray like Jesus taught us to pray. He said that the harvest is truly as plentiful, but the labors are few. He's saying, pray, ask me to send somebody across their path who will have influence in their life. Who will say, hey, you have managerial skills. You know what distribution is all about. Stop using it in this manner. You have untapped potential. That's what he wants us to do. And then not only are we to ask for God's mercy, but we must believe those prayers that we are praying on their behalf, that God wants to answer them and that he is going to answer them when we lift them up to him. So I want you to be specific. Okay. Be specific when you're praying for these individuals, call their names out. Now, you see, when we spend time daily praying in this manner, we give God permission in the earth and we allow that his will will be made manifest. Amen. This also contributes to us becoming more sensitive to the voice of God. So you can hear when he's saying, don't go there today. Wait. Don't make that turn. Make this turn. Talk to that person. Remember, he said that his instructions never had to make sense, but they do make faith. Remember, he said in Proverbs 3, 5, trust me from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for my voice in everything you do, every decision. I'm the one that's going to keep you on track. And isn't that what we're looking, we're desiring to stay on track? We don't want to be distracted. We all have goals, dreams, visions, things that we want to accomplish. This is the only way that we're going to be able to fulfill those is to stay focused and to stay on track. But with that said, we have to learn to discipline ourselves, to trust and to follow him. When we do, that's when we will begin to experience the peace, the godliness, the honesty in our cities. He has promised in 2 Timothy 2. Now, I believe most believers are praying for our leaders. We are praying for our neighbors. We are praying for our judges. But the thing that we can't do is pray. And then when we step out of the house, we take those prayers back with our words. Proverbs 18, 21 said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can plant the seed of that word. And then someone tells you, hey, did you... Here's so-and-so on the television today. Oh, that idiot. Or oh, why is she doing that? You just took back your prayers. You dug that seed up that you planted right there. So I just want to encourage you on tonight as you begin to pray for your governor, your mayors, your judges. Is that you don't get worked up if they are not the ones that you voted for to come into office. God said, I know how to deal with them. I dealt with Paul. He terrorized the church believers. He wanted to put um, believers in jail. But what we want is when we call out those judges names who are in our cities, I say your cities. Okay. You can pray to the Supreme court the same way, but when you pray for your local judges. So for example, if your son or daughter or another friend comes up before that judge, God has already been speaking to him. So he's going to judge it godly, despite what the books may say. The books may say because of what you did, you need to do 10 years. But God is able to speak to him because of your prayers. Okay, he's able to say, I'm just going to give you one. 
Then you're able to just serve half that time, and I'm going to set you up with this program. Okay, because God is in the restoring business. But he needs our permission in the earth because he said, I put you in charge. Whatever you allow, whoever you vote in office, whoever you elect, they're mine. You've given them to me. They're my man or woman because I have to honor what you did. So let's remember that. But also remember the power of your prayers, that prayer of faith. So I'm hoping, I hope on tonight that you are able to receive from this word. And I would like to invite you the same way you're tuning in right now, YouTube, Facebook, this Sunday, the 22nd of November for part seven of our series out of the book of Romans. God bless you tonight and keep chewing on God's word.